Good morning and welcome to this, our worship service, Palm Sunday service, coming to you from Trinity Lutheran Church in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm Pastor Gary Schuske and it's my privilege to be with you here today in worship. We want to extend a word of welcome to all of you who are joining us from the greater Rhine-Main area of Germany and indeed from all around the world. What a blessing it is that we can begin our Holy Week journey together here today. If you're worshiping online for the first time today, or maybe the first time in a while, let me review with you just a few thoughts of how you might prepare to worship from your home. Certainly you're welcome to pause the video if you'd like to do so to gather a few things. Uh, today, please gather some chairs by the television or the computer monitor, kind of making that a worship area. We'd encourage you to find a candle or two to light those candles. Maybe there's a small child in your home that would like to be your acolyte today uh, for your service. Uh, we're waiting for Easter for the beauty of flowers, that gift of new life, but today a green plant or maybe uh, those palm branches you took some time preparing during the course of this week. Uh, today we're going to encourage you to wave those palm branches during our prelude and our postlude and the hymns as well. Here in church we'll wave them during our prelude in particular. Please have your Bible nearby that you might look up a passage or two along the way. Uh, please do minimize the distractions, turn off your cell phones and so forth. And then in your home, of course, do all the things we're doing here in church. Sit, stand, pray, sing, be part of all of those elements of the service today as we gather together today, still at a distance and yet together in the word and together as his family. If you'd like to pause the video now to prepare, you're certainly welcome to do that. Otherwise, here in church, we're going to take just a moment in silence, preparing our hearts for our prelude. Our service then begins this morning with our prelude, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, 
renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for our Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the ninth chapter of Zechariah, starting at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We now have our epistle reading. The epistle reading is taken from the second chapter of Philippians, starting at the fifth verse. Have this in mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equally with God, thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found a human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may now be seated. At this point, we're going to have a children's message. Give me just a moment to get my palm branches again. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you could join us today on this Palm Sunday. I hope you were listening to the story today from our gospel just a few minutes ago, and that's why we're waving some palm branches. I hope you made some at home to wave, and if you didn't, that's all right. You've got all week. Feel free to wave those palm branches whenever you'd like to do so, because they remind us of a wonderful, wonderful celebration. Now today, I want to start by teaching you maybe a new word Maybe you've heard this word before, I hope so, because we just had it in our gospel. The word is Hosanna. Let's say that together, shall we? Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna was a very, very common word in the worship of the people when Jesus was alive. And this is what it means. Save us now. Let's say it together one more time, shall we? Hosanna. Hold that word in your heart, because today I want to talk to you about a promise. We all know what promises are, don't we? A promise, for example, is something when someone tells you this is going to happen. Maybe they promise you a surprise on your birthday, or they promise you something wonderful is coming. But did you notice, boys and girls, part of a promise means you have to wait now, I want to tell you about a promise my dad made to me when I was a little boy. I was probably six or seven years old, and my dad promised me something I had been wanting for so long. My dad already had one, my sister already had one, and now I was going to. He promised me my very own horse. Wow, wasn't that exciting? The problem was, he told me it was a promise I was going to have to wait for. Here's why. Because one of our mama horses was going to have a baby horse, and that baby horse would be mine. But of course, I had to wait and wait for that day when that promise came true. I'll never forget the day our beautiful colt was born. His name was Dan. I've given Satish a couple pictures to show you. Uh, the first one, there's Dan. You can see him just a little bit. You see there are three kids trying to teach Dan how to lead. By the way, can you tell? I think the colt is winning and the children are not. Look closely, the young fellow with a lot more hair, with his brown pants stuck in his cowboy boots. Yes, that is me. And my colt, Dan, was about two weeks old in that picture. Look then at the next one. This was taken about a month later. Dan was about six weeks old. Again, the colt 
the foal this time of a horse. It was a wonderful day, a promise worth waiting for. Well, today we have something else in our gospel. Maybe you heard it, an interesting story. Jesus tells his disciples, go, and what will they find? In the village, they'll find a colt, the foal, the baby, this time not of a horse, but of a donkey. And he says, bring that colt to me. And then they get there and they place their cloaks on him. And Jesus rides on him into Jerusalem. What you may not know, boys and girls, is that doing that, Jesus is keeping a promise. A promise that goes all the way back to the beginning of time in Genesis when God promised us a savior. And then 500 years before this moment, the promise is made, maybe you heard it in our Old Testament, that the Messiah, the Savior, was going to come into Jerusalem riding on the colt, on the foal of a donkey. And after all those years, that promise came true. Jesus came riding into the city. And what did the people do? They laid their cloaks on the ground and they laid palm branches on the ground and they waved those palm branches as maybe you're doing at home and they shouted, what? Hosanna, save us now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Boys and girls, the question we need to ask is this, why did God need to make that promise? Why did God need to keep that promise? 500 years they waited for that promise of the donkey coming in. And you know why, boys and girls? Because, well, sometimes we don't keep our promises, do we? Sometimes we do things that we shouldn't do. Sometimes we say things maybe that hurt other people. Sometimes we're like that picture you saw a moment ago of my stubborn colt digging in his heels, not wanting to do maybe what mom or dad or our teachers ask us to do. My friends, the Bible calls those things sin. Why did Jesus ride into Jerusalem? He rode into Jerusalem eventually to go all the way to the cross for you and for me. Jesus is our Hosanna. He came to save us now. He died on the cross. He was raised again. And in him, our sins are forgiven. In him, we have reason to celebrate with our palms today. Why? Because Jesus has come to save us. Jesus has come to save you. And by the way, he makes us one more promise. Jesus, who came after all of those centuries, a promise fulfilled, has made us a promise that he is coming again. Wouldn't it be something if we were there to see that day? I wonder if maybe we would wave our palm branches again. I'm going to ask you boys and girls now to pray with me and then go ahead and wave those palm branches again during our sermon hymn. Let's play. pray. Please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for keeping your promise. Thank you for keeping your promise. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to be my Hosanna. To be my Hosanna. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for your promise. And thank you for your promise to come again. To come again. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for being such great listeners. And again, wave those palm branches now as we have our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our text for this morning on this Palm Sunday is the Gospel reading from Mark, the 11th chapter, read just a few moments ago. I want to start our message today by reading you some ancient words. By the way, they may sound familiar. It's probably also helpful to remember they were already ancient words by the time they were spoken here in Mark's Gospel. Listen closely to these words. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. A reading from Psalm 118 this morning. I'd like to ask you to think back a bit. Think maybe of some time today that you actually attended a parade. Amazing thing about parades, they seem to reach across many cultures, don't they? Imagine for a moment you're standing on the sideline, maybe on the curb of a street as a parade goes by. What do you see? You see banners and streamers. What do you hear? Maybe you hear bands playing and the sound of people talking and shouting and cheering and clapping. What do you do? Maybe you get to wave a flag or wave a banner. Maybe it's a day of religious celebration. Maybe it's a day of national celebration. It could even be a day of a great sporting event. There you are, part of that wonderful celebration. Can we go just one step deeper, though? Have you ever maybe actually been in a parade? Maybe you played an instrument in the band that marched by. Maybe you got to drive one of the tractors or maybe one of the wonderful antique cars that went by. Maybe you even got to ride on a float. Dear friends, I've gotten to do that more than once, but don't be too impressed. It wasn't about me. It's because I was a school teacher. And one thing people love at a parade is lots of children having a good time, and parades often have candy for the children as well. My friends, whatever the reason you were there, the message of the parade is about the same. Think about that. A parade does not say, stay away. No, a parade says, come, be part of the celebration. This is for you. There is something that is worth celebrating. There's some event that's worth remembering. There's some person who is worth honoring. Today, we are invited to be in a parade, not just at a parade, but in a parade. Strangely enough, that parade happened over 2,000 years ago, and yet we're invited to be there as well. The banners and colored streamers, well, they have been replaced now with palm branches and cloaks. Antique cars and tractors, well, they're replaced with a humble donkey. And the call of bands marching and crowds shouting, well, we hear that today in those shouts again, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But just like our parades today, remember there's a message to this Palm Sunday parade as well. Something life-changing is happening. Something is happening that we will remember for centuries. Why? Because there really is someone worth honoring above all honor and glory and laud and praise. And his name is Jesus Christ. As we make this journey now into Holy Week, remember he is the reason that we make the journey. Today I want to draw out four thoughts from this parade. Each one will touch our lives. We're going to talk about the crowd, 
Then we're gonna talk about that donkey, what's that all about? And then we'll talk about the Hosanna, and finally we'll talk about the scriptures. Let's start with a crowd, shall we? I wonder if the whole idea of crowds sounds different to us this year. After all, we've just spent over a year now trying to avoid crowds, haven't we? Maybe you're looking forward to being in one. Maybe you haven't missed that part very much at all. Funny thing about crowds, you're there for two reasons usually. Sometimes you're there because you've chosen to be there, like maybe at a big sporting event. Other times you're there because, well, there's a crowd and it just sort of happened to you whether you wanted it to be that way or not. My friends, I had that experience a few years ago. My sister and I and a few of our friends planned a special vacation trip to New York City. All the things you'd expect. We were going to go to Times Square and go to the Statue of Liberty, and we bought tickets for a play on Broadway. What a wonderful trip we had planned. And then we got the news. Guess who else was coming to New York City? Pope Francis himself. And guess when he was going to be there? Exactly when we were going to be there. My friends, I'll tell you, it was actually kind of exciting. This crowded city was even more crowded. There were people everywhere. There was excitement everywhere. What was interesting, though, is people came for so many different reasons. On one crowded street, there'd be a gathering of Catholics who had come to pray. A few blocks away on another street were protesters shouting, holding up their placards, making their demonstration. A bit further down the way, there were, well, ordinary tourists who were there because they'd sort of already paid for their Broadway tickets after all. On the first Palm Sunday, that's exactly how it was, my friends. Some people in the crowd were there because they had actually seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. Can you imagine? Of course they followed him. Of course they wanted to see what happened next. Others were there because that first group didn't keep their mouths shut. What they had seen, they told everyone, and people joined in. Still others were there, well, you might say, because they'd already paid for their trip to come to the Passover, and they got caught up in that crowd. Whatever their reason for being there, this much we know. They were there and we join them there today because that is God's plan. In this parade, he's got something in mind for us today. As we look at that moment, we remember this is God's plan, but we want to go even deeper. Who is in this crowd, my friends? Don't forget, one group is the disciples. John chapter 12, we're going to get there in a moment, actually tells us they didn't understand what was going on yet, but one day they would. Why? Because they were the ones that had followed him now for years. They were the ones who saw him do his thing. They were the ones who heard him preach his message of hope. And one day, they would be the ones to explain to others what it all meant, especially what Hosanna meant. Who else are his disciples, my friends? Don't forget today, it is you and me. By the grace of God, by the faithfulness of people like your grandparents, maybe your Sunday school teachers, you know what is going to happen next. You know what it all means. Can we be the ones to help explain it to others? There's one more thing here we cannot miss. Today we are invited not to sit on the sidelines and on the curbs, but no, to join in the parade. This journey through Holy Week has no room for spectators, no room for those that are watching. The Holy Week journey is for you and for me. It is both a group and a personal spiritual journey. Why? Because we remember this above all. Why celebrate Holy Week? Not because it's a nice tradition. Why celebrate Holy Week? 
not even because we want a bit of normal this year, and we certainly do. No, we make this Holy Week journey. Why? Because Jesus came, comma, because we needed him to. That is Holy Week. The crowd, now let's talk about that donkey for a moment. Why such an insignificant creature as a donkey? And have you noticed how often donkeys show up in your Bible? Sometimes we paint them in pictures where they weren't even actually mentioned in the scriptures. So why does Jesus come into the city on a donkey? It's exactly what we said in our children's message a few moments ago. It was keeping a promise. A promise that goes all the way back actually, to Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Make a note, Genesis 49, verse 10. And then 500 years before this event, our Old Testament today, Zechariah 9, promises the Messiah, the Savior, the Hosanna one, will come into Jerusalem on the colt, on the foal of a donkey that no one has ridden. Why does Jesus ride in on that donkey? Because God promised that he would. God has a plan for our salvation. If you don't think so, look again at the amazing part of this passage. Mark emphasizes more than any other this interesting story about how long goes Jesus. He sends two disciples, go into the village. Here's what you're going to find. You're going to find a colt of a donkey that's never been ridden, tied up in just such a place. Bring it to me, and if anyone asks you, what are you doing? Say, the Lord has need of it, and it'll be back immediately. Everything happens exactly as Jesus promised that it would. Our God has a plan for our salvation. When it comes to your salvation and mine, Jesus is not going to take a shortcut, not even one. On the cross, when he says, it is finished, that is exactly what he means. Everything has been completed according to God's plan for our salvation. Now, we've had a crowd, we've had a donkey. How about the Hosanna? Sure, you were listening closely to our children's message a moment ago. Hosanna was part of the liturgy of the worship in Jesus' day. It was a word as familiar as Alleluia or Amen is to us today. Hosanna means save us now. And as Jesus marched into Jerusalem, that is what they called out. Why? Because that is exactly what Jesus was coming to do. He was coming to save us now. Is Hosanna just a word that we say? No, dear friends, it's time again for we disciples, those who follow Jesus, to look a little bit more deeply at why we need to be saved now. Think about your week. Where have you fallen? Again, what promises have you broken? Again, what words have you spoken that hurt someone else? What mistakes did you make that actually caused pain or brokenness to yourself or to someone else? My friends, it goes still deeper. The honest heart of the believer cries out to God today in the midst of our fears, in the midst of our tears, in the midst of our anger, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our depression, in the midst of our loneliness, we call out, God, Hosanna, save me now. Lord, save me. I have come to the end of myself. And what does Jesus do? He does exactly what he promised he would do. Traveling into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, remember, was only the beginning of his parade. And if that looks strange, look what happens next. Because eventually his journey leads him down what we have come to call today the Via Della Rosa where he will no longer be cheered for, but jeered at. 
and mocked and spit on and beaten and finally raised up on the cross there in suffering and in agony listen to him call out remember that plan as he says my god my god why have you forsaken me it is finished father into your hands i commend my spirit and he died his body of course was taken down and placed in a tomb we're going to talk about that especially on good friday and remember to really celebrate the joy of easter we must travel through good friday first we must spend time there at the cross and remember again there are no spectators in holy week jesus went to the cross because we i you needed him too of course easter is coming our God, who always keeps his promises, kept the promise Jesus has given us again and again recently. On the third day, he will rise again. Jesus has come to save us, and this very day, he gives us the promise and hope of our salvation, the promise that our sins are forgiven, gone for us forever, the promise that we will live forever. My friends, among the most touching parts of this narrative to me comes actually in John's Gospel. Remember those disciples, the ones who knew him so well? Listen to what John says about them on Palm Sunday. He says his disciples did not understand these things at first, but... When Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and done to him. Dear friends, also as his disciples today, what can we remember from what happened to them that day? First of all, they didn't understand exactly what happened, at least not yet, and that didn't change God's plan. Dear friends, there are times in our lives as believers that we don't always understand, do we? Even your pastors, if I tell you the truth, sometimes read our Bibles and scratch our heads and then read our Bibles and watch the news and start to cry and wonder, Lord, what is all happening here? And yet the fact that we do not always understand does not change God's absolute plan to send us Hosanna, to send us salvation. My friends, it's okay to ask questions. But as we do so, let's also relish in the most incredible glory of all, the thing that makes no sense of all. How could someone come back to life except God promised it and he made it so? The other thing I want us to learn from the disciples is this. What did they do once they understood? They told everyone what it all meant and what was going to happen next. Today, we are those disciples. Again, thank your grandparents, your Sunday school teachers, maybe a pastor or two along the way for sharing that good news with you, the promise of why Jesus came and the promise he is coming again. This very day, this personal journey through Holy Week, don't we all know people that need to hear the message of Hosanna, maybe whose lives have brought them low in pain and brokenness so that they want to call out, Hosanna, save me now? We are the ones that can share that message of hope, that message of hope that changes everything. As we do that, we remember one more incredible promise. We say it so often, but let's never take it for granted. What's happening? Verse 10 of our gospel tells us the kingdom is still coming. Yes, the kingdom of our father David, that wonderful and glorious day when Jesus comes again. Our God who keeps his promises is going to keep that one too. In the meantime, we still have the scriptures. The scriptures that give us the picture of what our lives look like. You can read them in our epistle lesson today, but please listen for now. Have this in mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus' name, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand now as we're done together confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We go to God in prayer. We'll also allow some time, as is our custom, for you to raise the prayers of your own hearts and minds as well. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation and your work in our lives every day, show us the answer to all our prayers of Hosanna. Save us now in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, preserve your church all around the world as we make this journey through Holy Week to the cross and the empty tomb together. Be with all congregations, pastors, missionaries, and workers so that your word may be preached and taught and many more come to faith in your Son. We pray for our mission partners in the U.S. and all around the world. Be with the pastors and people of Redeemer Lutheran Church, Sanford, Florida. St. John Lutheran Church, Hazleton, Pennsylvania, the Cross Lutheran Church, Orlando, Florida, and at St. Michael's Lutheran Church, Prague, Czech Republic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Holy Spirit, dwell in our homes. May there be places where your word is taught and your love is shown to all. May we serve one another faithfully and grow in our knowledge of you and your desire for our lives. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office <clears> that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on those in need in any way today. We pray for those who are dealing with coronavirus. Pray for Earl and all those who are sick with the virus for Helena and her classmates in their quarantine, for those who have lost loved ones, and those who work every day to keep us healthy. Deliver us, Lord, from the bondage of this pandemic. We also pray for those requesting our prayers today, for Alan Kathleen, for Rachel and her child, for Hans Ulrich, Marlene, Edgar, Susanna, Karen, Eddie, Myra, Stephen and his family, Andreas and his family, Pat, Beth, Christina, Karen, John and Irene, Pat and Glenn, Jakob, Jan, Johanna, Kathleen and her family, John and Debbie, Donette, Glenn and family, for Paula and her family as they wait on your timing, 
be with her mother this day. Be with David and his father and with Jill and her family as she has been diagnosed with cancer. We pray also for Kent and Rico and their family as well as Earl's family as they are taking exams. Be also with Zenobia and her family as she returns to work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones today. We pray for Piotr and his family at the death of Mache and for Sally and her family at the death of Paul. Comfort them with the sure and certain hope of the Easter resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, now we take a moment to raise before you the prayers of our own hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all the reasons you give us today to celebrate. We join with Jeff in giving thanks for his successful kidney transplant. Please be also with Lauren and her family. We give thanks also for Bob and his family at his successful cancer surgery. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we remember the sufferings and death and resurrection of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation, we now offer our prayers before you in his name. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now take a moment to share the peace of the Lord with one another. Please do that in your homes as we do so here as well. The Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord. 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 We now take a moment for our offering reflection. As we do this, we want to encourage you please to remember online forms of giving that help to allow us to continue uh, to do our work and ministry here in Rhine Mine and also out to the four corners of the earth. But again today, thank God for many blessings, maybe those things we often take for granted and share that thought with others. We take a moment now in silence to reflect on all of God's gifts. And during our time of reflection, we now have special music from our sanctuary choir in the shadow of the palms.
Please pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, that we may be a blessing to others. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We now have our closing hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Please wave those palm branches. Be seated now for our postlude, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Highest, offered today by our children's choir. Before we have our dismissal, just a few reminders for us about Holy Week. Uh, we will have service on Monday, Thursday at 6 p.m. and Good Friday also at 6 p.m. Uh, we will, of course, offer those services on YouTube as well. And then naturally we'll be celebrating that wonderful gift of the Easter festival on Sunday, uh, both at nine in the morning and also at 11 in the morning. Of course, we'll have a YouTube presentation of that service also. If you are planning to attend the on-site service, we'll be delighted to have you with us, but do please contact the office to reserve a place uh, for you and for your family. 
Meanwhile, we wish you a very blessed Holy Week as you make this personal and this family and this congregation journey through Holy Week, remembering that we need Jesus to come, our Hosanna, and he has come and he is coming again. That is worthy of a week-long parade, in fact, of a lifelong parade. We now have our dismissal together. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Holy Week.